All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at applying the generalized chain rule to a function of several variables, uh, where those variables are functions of several variables. In the example, we have w is a function of three variables, x, y, and z, and is equal to 3x squared minus 2xy plus 4z squared. x, y, and z are all functions of two variables, u and v. x equals e to the u sine v, y equals e to the u cosine v, and z equals e to the u. So the notion of independent and dependent variables gets a little nebulous here. Um, w depends on x, y, and z. So you think of w as a dependent variable. Um, and But x, y, and z um, all depend on u and v. So u and v are truly the independent variables. And uh, I mean, technically, W is truly the dependent variable, but that kind of topmost parent function is always a single variable. And so it's not that helpful for uh, setting up the equations and that kind of thing. So for heuristic purposes, I refer to these as the dependent variables. So X, Y, and Z depend on U and V. U and V are independent. Um, so that's what I refer to in step one. Um, try to think about how many equations you're going to have and how many terms you're going to have in each equation. I think that's really helpful as you set the system of equations up. Um, we are going to have uh, three terms per equation um, because we have three dependent variables. So we're going to have like X terms and Y terms and Z terms. So three terms. And then we're going to have two equations. We're going to have a U equation and a V equation. So we'll have two equations because there's two independent variables, U and V. And then each equation will have three terms on the right um, and then since this is just kind of two layers, each term will have two factors. Um, you would need U and V to be functions of yet more variables to have more factors in each term. All right, that should be enough to kind of write out the system. Um, and you always want to be taking on the left derivatives of the sort of topmost parent function so these will be partial derivatives with respect to W. And uh, there's going to be one for U and one for V, right? Because of the legwork we did in step one. And then we know we're going to have three terms, uh, an X term, a Y term, and a Z term. And each of those is going to be uh, partial derivatives where we try to take the derivative uh, with respect to x, but then x will be a derivative with respect to u. So partial w, partial y, partial y, partial u. So these, again, the first equation, they're all technically partial derivatives with respect to u, but we're looking at how x, y, and z depend on u on the right side. So look at that pattern, how they're all kind of similar. Um, and then we're doing partial derivatives of W with respect to V, but we need to go through X, Y, and Z. And that's our system of equations. So again, this can look different. You could have more equations or less equations. We usually have more equations. You could have fewer terms or more terms. Um, I guess you could have fewer equations too. Um, but the kind of format of these is, is similar. Um, so hopefully you can generalize that process to the other examples. Um, now I want to fill out the right side of these. Uh, and so I need all those partial derivatives.
So uh, let's start with the partial derivative of w with respect to x. So for partial derivatives of w with respect to x, y, and z, we'd be using the w function given at the beginning. Partial derivative with respect to x, we get 6x minus 2y. All right, let's do a same thing, partial w, but do partial y. Uh, then we just have that middle term, and the derivative is 2x. And finally, partial derivative of w with respect to z, we just need to look at the last term, and it's 8. Now we want to get the partial derivatives of x, y, and z with respect to u and v. So let's look at the partial derivative of x with respect to u. So then I'd be looking at that function there. And so v is a constant. So this is just going to be e to the u sine v. Now partial y, partial u, uh, e to the u cosine v. And finally, partial z, partial u, e to the u. Now we'll take partial derivatives of x, y, and z with respect to v. Partial x, partial v. So the derivative of sine is cosine. Partial y, partial v. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. And partial z, partial v, there's no v there. So e to the u is a constant, and so that's just zero. Now you can take all these pieces and plug them in. Right? Um, you know, for instance, partial derivative of w with respect to x, that'll go right there, and that'll go right there. Um, and partial derivative of x with respect to u, that'll go right there. Um, you actually should have all of those partial derivatives there, so we just kind of slot them all in to the equations in step two. And what does that look like? Partial w, partial u, so we'd start with partial w, partial x, use parentheses, 6x minus 2y, uh, partial x, partial u, e to the u, sine v, plus partial w, partial y, negative 2x, partial y, partial u, e to the u, cosine v, plus partial w, partial z, z, times partial z, partial u, the u. So there's our first equation. We've got one more. Partial derivative of w with respect to v. Partial w, partial x. Still 6x, it's 2y. But now times partial x, partial v, e to the u, cosine v. Uh, partial w, partial y, still negative 2x but now times partial y, partial v, negative e to the u sine v. And the last one's going to be zero, but it would be partial w, partial z, which is 8z, times partial z, partial v, which is zero. Um, you could do a little bit of simplifying and cleanup there, but we are going to want these as functions of u and v, right? we got too many variables here. Um, I mean, the goal is to get something that's uh, relating W and U uh, and W and V. And so X and Y and Z, those are just the middle variables, and we want to kind of get rid of those. So let's clear some of this stuff out.
So step five, it says replace the dependent variables, uh, which are X, Y, and Z, um, with the independent variables, uh, which are U and V. Um, and what you're doing there is you're using the original functions for uh, X, Y, and Z as functions of U and V. So we actually had those at the very beginning of the problem. Um, and we'll just rewrite them here for convenience. So we'll replace all the X's with E to the U sine V. Replace all the Y's with E to the U cosine V. And we'll replace all the Z's with E to the U's. So doing those substitutions, uh, these are going to get a little long. So maybe I put them right here. Remember how long these actually get. So again, looking at this, I've got uh, 6x. And so I do 6e to the u sine v minus 2y minus 2e to the u cosine v. So that's the 6x minus 2y. Uh, if you already have U's and V's, you don't need to do anything there. Uh, minus 2X would be minus 2E to the U sine V uh, times E to the U cosine V. And then 8Z is 8E to the U cosine. Oh, yeah, no cosine. <laughs> 8Z is 8E to the U. Uh, but then there's another e to the u after it. So 8z e to the u is 8e to the u e to the u. Right. And then we could simplify that. Um, I guess we should show this, right? So let's distribute here. Uh, if we multiply those, e to the u times e to the u is e to the 2u, right? Uh, and so that's 6e to the 2u, uh, sine times sine is sine squared. Multiplying these, I've got negative 2e to the 2u uh, cosine sine. I think I'm going to write as sine cosine. Now, these also give you an e to the 2u. And then we get an e to the 2u there as well. Um, so the uh, two middle ones actually combine. And you get negative 4 e to the 2u sine v cosine v. Uh, you can then simplify, I don't know, you can then factor, and I don't know if that simplifies anything. So the factored forms on the handout, let's just write it out. Uh, Yeah, so there's a common factor of 2e to the 2u that you could factor if you wanted to. So let's get rid of this stuff and put our answer here. All right, and we're going to do the same thing for the second equation, the partial derivative of w with respect to v. Okay, so we're using this equation now, uh, using the same substitutions. So replacing x with e to the u sine v minus 2y, re replacing y with e to the u cosine v.
And we've got two negatives there. So let's go ahead and make that a positive 2x to e to the u sine b, e to the u sine b, and then uh, plus 0. And we're ready to distribute. So let's there, that's going to be 6e to the 2u sine v cosine v. This is going to be minus 2e to the 2u cosine squared b, and then plus 2e to the 2u sine squared b. Uh, and it, you see a sine squared minus cosine squared. Um, maybe you're thinking there's a way to simplify that. I don't think there is. Uh, and so I think our final result, unless you want to factor, you can factor off a 2e to the 2u again. We would just have, well, we would just have this. So you notice how we now have these partial derivatives as just functions of u and v, um, which is what we wanted. So that's what you do in step five. And that is it. That is, those are the, the chain rule derivatives. Um, for validation, um, you know, the textbook talks about using a tree diagram and we can use that to kind of validate our equations from step two. Um, and then we can use direct substitution to validate these results from step five. So let's set up a tree diagram real quick. So the idea with the tree diagram is you start with your top function w, and then based on the number of variables, you would have that many branches. So we've got x, y, and z, so we'll have three branches. And each one of those is a derivative. So we've got the partial w, partial x, partial w, partial y, and partial w, partial z. And then you have x, y, and z. Those are functions of u and v. And so they have two branches. These are a little too far apart. Like that. That'll work. And you'll get the partial derivatives of x with respect to u and b. and partial derivative of y with respect to u and v, partial derivative of z with respect to u and v. And then what you do is you follow each of the paths. Uh, and so if we take the topmost path and we multiply along the way, um, and then we write the result. Right, and then we would take this path. And then we would take this path. And these are the same terms, the six terms that we had in our equations. 
this is another way to come up with those. Uh, but then putting them together, you need to kind of match them up based on U's and V's. So we'd want to have the U terms, those end up forming an equation, right? You'd add those to get partial W, partial U. And then you would look at the V ones. So they kind of alternate and you would add those up, and that would equal the partial W partial V. So there's a little bit of kind of spatial reorganization to get the equations from it, but all your terms are there. You just kind of group them according to U's and V's. So um, not my preferred way of doing things, but if you really like that, I mean, that could be what you do in steps one and two. Um, to get your equations. And then you can do what I was doing as your validator. Um, but that doesn't really validate the results, just those equations. And so you could have messed up with that. To validate the result from step five, our final partial derivative equations, uh, we would need to use direct substitution. And the way that works is we take the original function, and then we take our other equations that define the dependent variables. and we just directly substitute them in right from the beginning into this and get W explicitly as a function of U and V. So the three X squared turns into three and then X is E to the U sine V and that's squared x e to the u sine v, y is e to the u cosine v, that's your negative 2xy, and then plus 4z squared is 4 e to the u squared. Uh, and then you want to simplify that before you do any derivatives. So get e to the 2u sine squared v, uh, e to the 2u sine v cosine v, and four B to U. Can't really simplify any more than that. Uh, but now we're ready to take partial derivatives with respect to U and V. All right, so looking at U as the variable differentiation and B as the constant, uh, the derivative of the first term, uh, we would get a two from the two U exponent and get six B to the two U sine squared B. In the second term, uh, same thing, we get a two uh, from that exponent, four e to the two u. And then same thing in the last term, uh, eight e to the two u. And, and then that actually matches up with what we had in uh, step five for the first equation. And then we do the same thing, but partial derivative with respect to V. So now it's derivative of sine squared, uh, which would be uh, two sine cosine. So six e to the two U sine cosine. Um, derivative of sine times cosine, we have to use the product rule. Um, and so we'd have derivative of the first is cosine times the second sine plus the first sine times the derivative of the second, which is 
negative seven. Uh, and then the last one's a constant with respect to V, so just a plus zero. And then just clean this up a little. Uh, and we should get what we had before, where we have the cosine squared and the sine squared. So you make sure that these match up with what we got in step five, uh, and then we are done. All right, so that's it. Oh, I was gonna quickly show the Python stuff um, in lab four. Uh, I've got the same example here being done with Python. So we wanna define all the independent and dependent variables. Uh, X, Y, Z, U, and V. Um, go ahead and put in your equations. So there's the functions X, Y, and Z, and then there's the function for W. Uh, I'm calling it F, but that's W, right? Um, using uh, SymPy prefixes because we're doing symbolic calculations. So any special functions start with S, Y, M. Uh, and then you don't need to change the other parts here. You're just changing here where you have to define your functions. Um, oh yeah, I guess you would need to change this depending on what partial derivatives you want. Um, here we're doing partial derivative of u with respect to u and here with respect to v. Um, but very quickly we can get those same results from Python. So. All right, uh, that is gonna do it. I'll see you in the next video where we look at directional derivatives and the gradient.